Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Currency of Anarchy. I'm Josh Davis. I am Michael Freeman. And if you'd like to be a part of the discussion during our live tapings, please check us out at youtube.com slash user slash cur of anarchy on Mondays at 9 p.m., 6 p.m. Pacific. And you can see our final product on the air at youtube.com slash user slash voluntary virtues on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. And please check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash cur of anarchy. Uh, and you can leave any questions or comments on the thread we've just made or send us a Facebook message and we'll get right to it. I uh, just want to give a quick shout to Corporate Sellout, an independent clothing line promoting libertarian thought, minarchist or anarchist, with their own designs and screen printed shirts, sweatshirts and more. Corporate Sellout works with independent journalists and liberty activists, so if you're an activist, please find them at corporatesellout.storenv.com or visit them on Facebook or Twitter. So, Michael, uh, we have a very special guest. As usual, we do. Uh, tonight we are joined by, by Jeffrey Phillips. You want to you wanna say what's up, Jeff? How are we doing, Al? Good, man, good. Welcome to the program. Um, so I usually like to start by just asking... And, you know, you can use whatever isms you, you like to, but how did you come to find individual liberty? Uh, wow, let's see. I think the first thing might have been watching Loose Change, um, the documentary about 9-11, and uh, Loose Change, and what's the other one? Um, there's another one of those 9-11 documentaries that came out a while ago, Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist and... Um, Loose Change really kind of woke me up to the corruption of the government um, and how deep it really is. And then, um, and then I would say around 2007, you know, just uh, I found out about Ron Paul. Um, I, a buddy of mine showed him some of, showed me some of his uh, speeches, and I was like, "Who is this guy? He's a Republican! Like, this guy's awesome." But, um, uh, you know, and then, but back then I wasn't, I wasn't fully able to, to, you know, comprehend everything that is, uh, libertarianism or volunteerism or Ron Paul or anything like that. So, uh, it took a while to really catch on, but then this, um, this last election before the election, just, uh, I had some buddies, Free Hollywood and Hollywood that are a, a libertarian group. Um, that I was hanging out with a lot, and then this last election came through, and that really, you know, really hit it hard with that one. Cool, cool. Um, all right. So yeah, I think when you, when you first, when you were coming up, you were more of a a liberal progressive type. Well, it's weird because I remember going to school, and I remember second grade in Newport Beach, California, the teacher writing on the wall that there were five groups. There was Republicans, Democrats, Constitutional Party, Libertarian, and Green Party. And I remember I was the only person that picked Libertarian back then because there was like, oh, Libertarians just want to be left alone. And I was all, hell yeah, I want to be left alone. Like, that sounds cool to me. Like, and I, I remember being the only person who identified with that back then. Um, sure. But I grew up in a very liberal place, um, Orange County in L.A., um, LA a little bit less than Orange County, but definitely Orange County, super ultra liberal, and um, was was definitely influenced by my environment growing up. But I always knew in the back of my head that the way things were being done wasn't right, you know. Um, and then once I really grasped libertarianism, um, I, I really you know hit home for me more than anything else. Yeah, um, I think that if <laughs> if you believe that there are five political parties, you're going to have a really, really bad time. Yeah, and, I, uh, it's crazy uh, thinking back now that this school, like this teacher actually told us this, you know. It, it's really strange. Yeah, um, I was on the, the LP train for a little while, and it's it's not exactly my, my, my thing anymore, but when I first heard about it, you know, What's that mean? We want to take over the world in order to, to leave everybody alone, right? Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm down. 
Yeah. So, so I initially heard about you through Adam versus the Man, um, maybe about a year ago now or so, and I know you've since moved on from that. Um, you were. I'm sorry. That was a good stepping stone for activists, you know. Like he, uh, he's definitely down. Uh, yeah. Sorry, did I lose you? Briefly. Sorry. Um, yeah. yeah I mean, I could compare him while he was in jail. Those two times he went to jail. Yeah. Right on. Um, so from what I learned about you from there is you were dodging drones and living out in the desert and yeah, right at the gates of Mordor. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Um, I was uh, uh, I started a I had some eight, uh, 21 acres out in uh, the desert of the Palmdale area, Los Angeles, and um, I was kind of uh, turning it into a kind of uh, anarchist commune type, hippie commune type thing, and um, it, the problem was is the land I bought was smack dab in the middle of two General Dynamics um, drone, tra drone testing facilities where they test, they assemble and test every Reaper drone and Predator drone and a lot of other smaller weird drones, and um, they train all the pilots that, that um, get deployed and drop bombs on children with these things and so the second I got out there you know you could imagine the first time I saw a reaper drone over my property I, I put my kid and my wife in the car and sent them away because I thought I was getting drone sniped <laughs> uh, but it turned out that there was these facilities here and um, of course I, I couldn't just stand there and ignore them so I started I started trolling them. I put up some signs, don't drone me, bro. Um, <laughs> sign that said, your drones make America less safe. And um, the day after I made eye contact with one of the chase plane pilots, um, my trailer, I had a, a pretty awesome old, you know, vintage trailer. My trailer got ransacked. And it just got to the point where, like, I, I was, you know, kicking the hornet's nest kind of and it, it became a place that I couldn't bring people to anymore you know like I can't you know who knows what happened what could have happened or what could happen out there um, and after my place was messed with I didn't feel safe bringing my kid out there or, or anybody so um, the Phillips Ranch project is on hold at the moment being relocated but um I have a, a, a pretty cool little spot in a place called Topanga Canyon right now in L.A. So if anybody's visiting L.A., for sure hit me up. Um, it's a cool spot to hang out, Liberty people. Well, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, that it's on a hiatus or on hold until, you know, you figure out the logistics in the future. But it's it's good to see, <laughs> especially where you were. That's that's. Uh, yeah. I mean, I find that terrifying. Like where, where you mentioned you, you threw your 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 wife and and kid in the car and told them to get out of Dodge. I uh, I don't blame that at all. They have lots of bombs, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I didn't get. Really. So, I vaguely remember briefly after reading about that that you had some kind of boat thing going on oh that's just I'm I grew up on sailboats um, I live I, I lived on a sailboat up until I got that property out and out and uh, or at least until Adam moved out to LA I lived on a sailboat um, but I just work on boats a lot it doesn't really have anything to do with uh, libertarianism or anything like that but uh, boats are pretty rad they're good uh, escape vehicles and, um, you know, as far as, like, prepping goes or anything, having a sailboat is pretty ultimate. Um, yeah. But it's a... Uh, the ocean's a cool place. I'm down with boats. Big time. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I live in Rhode Island. Uh, Josh lives in Massachusetts. So A big part. Big, uh, ocean. Old school um, historical maritime harbors, for sure. Yeah, but it's really cold. It's really cold. <laughs> the water is real cold, man. 
I was going to say, we've, we've had, uh, this last week, we've had a couple 75-degree days here in L.A. Love it. <laughs> and I'm oh. about to hit end, end show. Um, so, so what do you got in the works, then? Um, I've just been, um, I'm putting together, I'm actually putting together a comedy skit. <laughs> Basically... Everything I've learned in the last couple years about life and freedom um, in, in a uh, comedic presentation, um, I'm doing that right now. I'm putting, making some videos here and there, but I've, I've tried to, to uh, put the activism not on hold, but just take it down a couple notches because I uh, let it consume a little bit too much of my life for a while there. And, and you know, it's hard to, when you when you're a part of something that's, you know, such a noble cause, it's really easy to get caught up and, you know, have it start affecting your life negatively, and um, it just kind of got to, to that point for a while there, so I'm starting to, you know, take things back a notch and just uh, start doing activism more in my daily life than on the internet, um, and, uh, you know, just living life trying to stay off the internet as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Says the guy who's on Google Hangouts right now. <laughs> so uh, before, we, before we started taping, you, you mentioned that you had to drive down to get internet. Yeah, I, I, live at a, I, live, I live in Topanga Canyon. It's a canyon right outside of like Malibu. And it's, like, it's, it's as rural as it gets for L.A. Um, there's not a lot of service. Um, we have like satellite internet that's uh, big time, um, so I just like the 4G is ten times better than the satellite internet. So I just drove down the hill down here, so I can talk to you guys. Cool. All right, I thought you might be in a cabin or in a I don't know. <laughs> so I know you do all kinds of crazy things. So yeah, I got I got uh, an eight eight acre property in Topanga. On it's a whole top of a mountain with two uh, modern trailers and solar and septic and power, you know, a well and all kinds of stuff right inside L.A. It's pretty cool. Jeez. It looks like it looks like the Grand Canyon doesn't look like you're in L.A. at all. It's like 10 minutes from Malibu. Um, it's a pretty awesome spot. Man, that sounds, that sounds fantastic. It's a lot better than L.A. The desert was, I mean, the desert was really tough. Uh, it's a lot easier than the desert. Like, you got to take everything, you know, water... Um, you got to generate your own electricity out in the desert, and you know, not that it's impossible, but it's a lot easier when you're close to town. So, Josh, you got anything? Um, actually, I, I was talking uh, just before the show with Jeff uh, about um, uh, Bitcoin and um, how I'm trying to get into that, or you know, about to get into it, and. Uh, you know, Michael keeps on bringing up how he's definitely into it and he loves it. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts about Bitcoin? I mean, this show is about currency, or partially about currency. <laughs> <laughs> I lost six coins in the last year. That's what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> uh, I took a pretty big hit this last year with the coins. I started, um, I started trading, uh, day trading coins and other cryptocurrencies, and um, just uh, I I love I love the crypt, cri uh, cryptocurrency market. Bitcoin's the most amazing thing that I can even talk about right now. Um, I definitely a lot of people, you know, I give people advice that either are talking shit about it or haven't got into it yet because everybody's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm saving up to buy some Bitcoin, and it's like it's not it's not really something you need to save up for. It's not like saving up for a gold round. You know, you can go, you can set up an account at, uh, at a Coinbase and buy 20 bucks worth. So what Jeffrey was getting at is, is Coinbase.com, which there are better alternatives now. You have things like Circle. Um, if you do the full registration with Coinbase.com, you don't even need to pay to buy Bitcoin. They will, if you do the full registration, link your bank account and all that, they will supply you with some starter Bitcoin to start out with. You know, between two or five bucks, nothing much. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a great way to get started. Hopefully we get Jeffrey back up here. 
There he is. I'm, I'm a magician. <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin magic, son. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> Uh, Jeffrey, yeah, what were you um, saying earlier? Oh, yeah, you know, a lot of people, you know, the, the critics, I'm like, hey, you know, like, why don't you just buy $20 worth and, you know, spread positive information about it because it's clearly something that's far better than what we have now. And, you know, it's not even something you need to own a lot of. You can buy 20 bucks worth, and that's a ton of Satoshis, and you can start trading or or start, you know, like once a month buy $20 worth or something like that. It doesn't have to be a huge investment. Is uh, um, Just getting it and using it and having it and spreading, you know, a positive message about it is really, you know, the best thing we could be doing right now, you know, to try and get away from the Federal Reserve and the, the uh, fractional reserve banking system and all that crap. Um, so, you know, I definitely would recommend, you know, Grabbing a couple, you know, you don't even have to buy full coins, just, you know, some fractions and start messing with it. Um, because, you know, at a certain point, this is, it's going to take over, most definitely. And, you know, the people, you know, us who, who you know, libertarians brought Bitcoin into the, into the mainstream pretty much. And, um, you know, when, when it does uh, hit really large, you know, us, the people that are holding on to a little bit are, are definitely going to reap the benefits. Well, well that's, how, that's how I use it, and that's how I, how I recommend as well. I don't uh, put a lot of money into Bitcoin or anything like that. Um, you know, when I first started doing it, I got my free five bucks from Coinbase and probably threw like three more dollars into there, bought some, some silver online and you know, I'll use it for the occasional online shopping, and I like to to help the Bitcoin market. It, it is a com in, in competition with the USD, and I can always support that. You know. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. But yeah, dude, I could definitely grab you know twenty bucks. Just get twenty bucks worth and get on. Um, <clears throat> if you want Bitrex, B I T T R E X is a really cool uh, trading market. Um. I would definitely do some research before diving in completely because it is pretty tricky. And like I said, I lost six coins this year. <laughs> it was pretty painful when it happened, but I lost them almost all on one coin, um, one cryptocurrency called Z Z X Anon coin. Um, and it was it was pretty painful, but you know you do start getting them up again, and once you buy some more, you just keep going. But um, it's definitely, it's, it's cool. I mean, liber we basically have our own, uh, you know, stock market. Like, it, I'm surprised more libertarians and anarchists aren't, you know, going more crazy over Bitcoin because it is our own little thing pretty much. And um, it, it's a lot of fun once you get a hang of trading and once you do make some coins, you're like, holy crap, like, I could do this for a living. <laughs> you get, you, you know, if you if you get your, uh, you know, get your life down to a manageable, you know, you don't have tons of credit or you aren't buying new cars all the time, you know, like get down to the bare minimum, you literally could, you know, live off of Bitcoin in trading because, you know, there are a couple of days where I made a coin in a day. It was pretty amazing. Wow. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, good money. Well, yeah. speaking of speaking of coins. <laughs> well, actually, uh, I just wanted to mention, uh, I think I heard that um, Microsoft is accepting Bitcoin or starting to accept yep. Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. Do you know more about that, Michael? Not much more than you do. I'm pretty sure it started two days oh, ago. Really? Anything from Microsoft, though. That guy's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Sony guy myself. Yeah. So, so <laughs> Who's another better. corporate... Bastard, but either way. <laughs> uh, 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 smart guided missile technology to Israel, though. Uh, you can find you can find something wrong with any corporation. Oh, exactly. Yeah, you know, speaking of Israel, uh, Jeffrey, I know you're you're pretty up on the the Gaza Israel Palestine thing. Yeah. And I'm not. You know, I. I believe that states are, are usually the bad guy 
regardless of the scenario. Um, and I haven't I haven't dotted my my L's or or, yeah, yeah. or crossed my B's on this one, but uh, I just, <laughs> I'm not sure that Josh is is overly informed either. So you yeah, know, we just I wanted to hear your opinion on it. Recommend just doing some research, uh, googling Zionism and World War II. Um, there was a lot of like Rothschilds. Like there was a lot of mischievousness being done by you know the 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 people who. Well, I mean, Israel's uh, run by um, you know warlords like military, and if you. If you check out the Balfour Agreement or the Transfer Agreement that happened in World War One through World War Two, and you really, really uh, research that, you'll 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 understand what we're going through right now a lot more. Um, the, the the several families that run the world basically have been, you know, we've been putting the people through a cycle of depressions and, you know, putting a lot of money you know, out and then bringing it all back in basically to steal everyone's property and there's, it's and start wars and all kinds of stuff and there's been cycle that's been going on for, you know, the last hundred years and we're just in another cycle again and I definitely check out the Balfour Agreement, the Transfer Agreement um, and just checking, you know, researching Z Zionism and, and the results of Zionism in this is in this century, and it's it's some really crazy stuff. I'll actually when I get you when I get home, I'll send you guys some really good links. Um, yeah, please do for for your peeps because this is really what is wrong with this world right now is Zionism. Like you can't point it at anybody else, but you know this group of people that is that has been you know that is been responsible for more blood being shed than anybody else in the world ten times over. And, well, um, I, I have my own subjective definition on what I believe Zionism is, but for, for the sake of audience, could you give us your, your definition? Uh, the Zionist, Zionism is basically the idea of a whole world, the whole world being Israel. And the people who want this are the richest families in the world who who run all the central banks. So we're basically, it doesn't seem like we're living in a whole world Israel right now, but we are. We've just been convinced otherwise. You know, especially in the United States, we are, we are, a, we are a, a product of that country as much as they are us. We're very, you know, they, they own our government, they run our government, they, they have everything, you know, all their claws and every, anything. I mean, we're not getting along with is, Israel right now, but they, we still keep giving them billions and billions and billions of dollars, and we keep okaying, you know, them, you know, committing genocide in um, Gaza. Like, there's no, these people don't have missiles and guns and airplanes and stuff, and they're, you know, they're, Gaza is like the highly, highest concentration of people anywhere in the world, and they're dropping bombs on them because, you know, BS. Um, Hamas, have you heard, you know, Hamas is supposedly the bad people in Gaza, but Hamas sure. is actually really um, just Mossad, and it's the Mossad acting in Gaza to, to uh, justify Israel dropping bombs on them. If, if these rockets weren't being fired out of Gaza, they'd have no excuse to go in there and drop bombs, so they had to you know, it's basically just like ISIS, just like Taliban. It's all made politically, you know, to give excuses to have wars and, you know, the feed the military-industrial complex. Yeah, right. I, but the yeah. Zionist, Zionist, this is another, another big reason why a lot of people uh, don't understand the whole Zionist Israel thing is because these Zionists, Zionists are not, in my opinion, they're not Jews. Because if they were Jews, they'd care about their people. And the Zionists have killed more Jews than anybody else in the world. So, you know, like in history, if you look at it, you know, it was almost wrong to be, to be calling, you know, to be casting the blame on, on the Jewish race when it was really 
the Zionists who are these jerks, you know, total asshole sociopaths, like only want to make money and own everything and just, you know, <laughs> don't care about people. And they don't care about their own people. And once you stop caring about your own people, you aren't a part of that group anymore, in my opinion. So, you know, I have tons of Jewish friends. They're awesome. Um, but these Zionists are the ones that are the assholes, and they've convinced, you know, they've brainwashed their people just as bad as we've been brainwashed to believe our stuff and to believe that America is the best and we're the greatest. You know, they've, <laughs> they've brainwashed their people to do the same thing, and that's why they've, you know, convinced them to basically be, you know, committing genocide in that country and totally be, you know, supportive of it. But, yeah, I mean, the, the whole the Israel Gaza thing is a big you know, a big issue I have with the world. <laughs> Bad stuff. Could I... Well, no, Josh, I'll let you go ahead. Uh, just now, that brings up a question. Uh, doesn't that conflict with the whole um, Nazi Germany story? You know, from right. the... Go ahead. If you are going to explain all of that, it's really, I mean, you guys really should, you should have me come on again and tell, give me the whole story on, on oh, what No, happened. actually, as Dude. a matter of fact, Jeffrey, this is like the greatest time for me to cut in and say this. We, the idea is that we will be having you come back. Um, <laughs> so the first of every month, we try to do a round table with all of our previous guests from the first month. And ideally, if you, dis if you agree, your round table would be so far, at very least, you, I, Josh, Rich Paul, uh, possibly Chris Cantwell, possibly um, Tony Bones, and a few, other, a few other potentials. Friends. Friends. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, and we just joke around. We do a little quick little... Have some fun. That'll be fun. Yeah, I mean, this the story of, I mean, the story how I explain what went down is, it's a pretty, it, I mean, it's the most, like, mind-blowing thing that I've come up with in my life is figuring out all this stuff that's been happening and how we've just been totally lied to. Because, you know, victor, uh, history is written by the victor. And what they taught us in school they taught us for a reason, and there was agenda behind it, and it's not what actually happened. You know, like why, why would you know why would we join forces with Stalin, who's killed fifty million of his own people, or something like that, to go fight some land battle in in Poland? Like it didn't. Nothing. There's so many things about World War II that didn't make sense to me growing up. I was a really big history fan. World War II buff, and there were so many questions that didn't make sense that once I figured all this stuff out, made so much that sense, and it was so scary coming to these conclusions, because, like, I was like, man, because, you know, Adam, the the uh, counterterrorism, Department of Justice counterterrorism unit was listening to me and Adam's phones when he was in jail. Probably still are, but, like, you know, I was, like, paranoid once I found out all this stuff about World War II and Zionism and everything, like, more than I ever have been because, like, it was just so mind-blowing because so much of what I've known, you know, was so much of what I was taught growing up was just BS and then realizing that everything in school is BS, you know, and then finding out this information that you know they don't want you to know, you know, was just really kind of scary. <laughs> But I was like, man, these guys are listening to my phone, and I'm finding out all this crap that I know they don't want me to know, and I have this platform, and, you know, some pretty cr crazy stuff happened during that time that he was in jail, just, like, being followed by unmarked, you know, government vehicles, and it's creepy stuff, but cool, so that, that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been... I've been raided, I've been raided before too. I've I've been in cages before. I know I know that paranoia, man. I really do. Like <laughs> last week or something, uh, one of my neighbors upstairs was was sick, and they called an ambulance. And I wake up and I just hear I, I see sirens outside, and I hear boots everywhere in my hallway, and this banging on my walls and stuff. And 
I like hit the floor and I think it's about to happen. I think Ron Paul's about to like walk in the hallway and and, <laughs> and say that it's on, right? And and yeah, I I've been raided, man. I know that paranoia. It's it sucks. Yeah, I don't want that ever to happen to me. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't raided like he was, but yeah. you know. Guns yeah. and cops are never a good time. Yeah. Uh what do we got for time here? Sorry about that. Well, we got about twenty five minutes. Um so Jeffrey, you were in Okay, and I can't say that I'm overly familiar with this with this band or group. Um uh, I'm a punk go. rocker myself, but you were affiliated with the Hollywood Undead. Yeah, that that was uh that was just kind of a joke that me and my buddies just messing around and it just got huge and I ended up leaving, you know, a couple of years into the project and they kept going, but um it was it was a pretty funny thing to happen. I've had a lot of funny stuff happen in my life and that was definitely <laughs> one of them. Yeah, cuz I I think okay. you're more Go ahead. Yeah, you're more of a punk rocker, I think. Yeah, I grew up in punk rock and heavy yeah. metal. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it was a uh, it was a funny thing because it just it, you know so many people go to Hollywood and want to be a rock star and don't and like we weren't <laughs> even happen you know just messing around, but um, it was pretty funny. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, should we take a minute and I'll go over the prices real quick? The price is right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, yeah, so last time we did this show uh, was December 8th. Uh, tonight is December 15th. We're live. Uh, I took the prices at uh, 753 and uh, silver last show was 16.34. Tonight it's 16.18. So it went down 16 cents. It's only 1%. Uh, gold uh, was 1201.25. It's gone down to 1196.58. That's uh, 467. So 0.4%. Not a big deal. Not too bad. Uh, Bitcoin had it was 361.79. Uh, tonight it's 344.15. That's 1764. Going down, and so that's about five percent. So, um, but there's been uh, it, it hasn't really been you know too bad, you know, not too volatile really, except for tonight. But uh, not a big deal. <clears throat> um, yeah, but so I haven't actually bought silver for about a month or so. Uh, I, I'm big into silver, Jeffrey. Um, uh, and so I, I like a lot of silver. I know that uh, the U.S. Mint has uh, basically stopped minting, or it did for a month. Um, I think it's back in minting mode, but um, it should be stopping for the year as well and then uh, restarting in January. But um, anyway, that's it's not a big deal. Uh, I know... Uh, the Swiss referendum didn't go in uh, Gold's favor. Ah, we got Jeffrey's video back. There we go. <laughs> silver's silver's really seven sixteen dollars right now. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah, it's gone down quite a bit. Yeah. A gold. I mean, gold was not a good advice for everyone, at least in that period. I mean, so many people in 2011 bought gold, and then it just tanked. Like, I lost a bunch of gold, too. Silver is, I mean, silver went down so much, but it's so good if you're buying it. But it right. just, I bought silver at $32, you know. Like, I bought gold at freaking, I don't even know how much I bought. I lost so much in gold, but. Really? So, you know, it, it's good to dabble in this stuff, but don't spend all your money on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't spend all your money on it. Like I remember, I bought uh, silver uh, a little bit uh, when it was twenty dollars, and then it went up to forty dollars. I sold, and it kept on going to forty-eight, and then uh, it started tanking down to thirty, then twenty, then now it's seventeen, and it went to fifteen, 
but it's going back up. I think it's going to be going back up now. I cannot believe silver rounds are sixteen dollars, man. That is <laughs> good board. Yeah. So um, but yeah, it it, it shouldn't be too hand over fist, man. Yeah. Right. Right. Bitcoin yeah. too. Silver. Those are good ones. Yeah. Don't go. You know, head first into it. You know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. But. Yeah. You know, like, you, you, and plus you're going to need cash to spend and, uh, you know, because a lot of people still aren't taking Bitcoin or silver or anything like that. But for the most part, I, I, if you're going to save for the long term, I'd say silver, gold, Bitcoin, that's a great idea. Yeah. I would yeah. stay away from gold. It's too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than, you know, a savings account. You know, that's not going to help. And a backup plan is a hell of a lot better investment than a big pile of gold. Yeah. You know, you can't eat gold. <laughs> <laughs> no. But then again, you know, you actually a, a lot of countries have been buying gold again. Uh, like Holland, uh, they took a lot of gold from the United States back into their coffers. Because uh, yeah, they're... You know, they Gold prices have been getting so bad, and then the 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 the, uh, the tone of of everyone's like opinion of our country right now. Like, I think Germany tried to take their money out too, take yeah. their gold. Like, we were like, "Oh, you can't take it." Not we, but the government here is like, I don't know. It's just everything's changing right now. China and Russia Russia are about to kick our ass, and you know, people know, you know that. I mean, these other countries are getting on, you know, they're they're smart. They're going, oh, okay, the dollar is going to take a shit soon. You know, we better get stuff out. And especially, you know, knowing about, you know, the banking systems here and, the you know, Fort Knox and the Federal Reserve and all this stuff, like, that, that gold might not even exist. You know, like, who knows with how shady our government is. That's it, yeah. We've never seen the inside over there. We remember how it went down with, with Nixon in China, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't trust the USD. Don't trust the U.S. government. I mean, no, no definitely <laughs> This should be common knowledge by this point. But it's yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier I heard Jeffrey talking about, you know, I heard you talking about your, your upbringing and, and your teachers in school and stuff, and I wanted to ask... Um, what was your what was your schooling? What was your upbringing? You know. Well, I grew up with my mom in Orange County, which is a very uh, it's split conservative liberal, but it's there's a lot of money in Orange County, and I moved away from her when I was 16 to go live with my dad, who lived on a sailboat, who was like. Uh, you know, you can get your GED if you want, and we can go, because he, he was a certified captain, so he'd go and do captaining jobs, and so I would, he gave me the option of finishing high, or finishing high school or getting a GED and going sailing with him, and that's what I did, and that's why I think I haven't been indoctrinated as much as, mo as most people, because I didn't get the bulk of that high school conditioning, you know. Um, so... You know, and then learning, you know, when I was in school, you know, where I went to school, they put me on, you know, they I was diagnosed with ADD, and they had me on three different types of psych meds. I was literally drooling in my chair, you know, and, like, I was, they'd, they'd test me, and I'd test off the charts, but, like, I wasn't paying attention because it was boring, you know, like, some people just aren't meant to you know, to be in those situations, and you see that with the Liberty Movement, you see those people that, you know, school wa wasn't meant for, you know, like, there are people that are susceptible, and they fall in line, and they, they do the tax cow thing for the rest of their life, and they're okay with it, and then there's those of us that just can't do it, and I just, and I, I've found that a lot of people who are more open-minded to our stuff, you know, how were able to get out of school or had some sort of different, you know, upbringing, maybe not watch so much TV, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but I also rarely had a TV growing up, too, so, 
Um, my mom knew that it was bad, and my dad didn't own one on the boat. So I think reading a lot growing up and not being, you know, in the school system as much um, just made, you know, this stuff so much uh, easier to take in and really grasp. See, I'm uh, I'm kind of the polar opposite. I I was in and out of group homes. I was a ward of the state from the time I think I was that I was seven. I could be wrong on the exact number, maybe six, maybe nine. I don't know, but uh, something like that. I was a ward of the state, in and out of group homes, uh, state schools. I joined the military shortly thereafter. That you know, um, but where I can't. I'm sorry. What were you in group homes for? Um. You know, I'd rather not say exactly, but not for myself, just for my for my parents, stuff like oh, that. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather, just in case somebody might see it, you know, I'd rather not get into that. Um, addiction and drugs and that type of stuff, I'll say that much. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I was straight edge for part of my life. I was in the program and everything, so I was pretty, I hit that stuff pretty hard early on, but yeah. I got it them pretty quick. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, but so so when you say that um, for you it was kind of easy to accept these ideas of you know individual liberty or self ownership or whatever. Uh, for me, it wasn't. It was like a punch in my face. Like it was. It, it knocked me on my my ass for like eight months. I was staying awake for nights at a time and and doing crazy research and. and you know, all I had known was nationalism and statism and, and to obey. That's that was the only thing I knew my whole life, and and yeah, it was a big turnaround to come to the philosophy of the fact that authority is a hallucination. You know. Yeah, definitely. Big time. Big time. <laughs> big time. <laughs> <laughs> so your turn, Josh. What do you got? Well, Topic time. Um, I, I'll talk about uh, the fact that I guess I I was uh, basically indoctrinated uh, up until right after college. I guess I have more of the conventional story where, you know, you find yourself after college. You know, you get into the workforce and it's like a 360 because you have to take care of yourself after college. Um, you know, you're always told to look up to your leaders and all the way, uh, all that, but um, uh, I started to get into politics a little bit, and um, uh, like 2008 happened, and, <laughs> you know, it basically I, it, it woke me up because Obama and McCain were running for the uh, office, and uh, they voted the same way, even after they were saying, hey, we're not going to vote for the bailout. They voted for the bailout, both of them. So uh, that woke me up, at least to libertarian minarchism. And, um, uh, you know, it just went from there. I talk about this story all the time, but, uh, it, you know, a lot of people just wake up differently. Uh, in a, um, Or some people don't even need to wake up. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, you know. Okay. Go ahead. Are you still a minarchist? Me? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm. Uh, yeah, I came to uh, anarchism due to Stefan Molyneux, um, and yeah, I see some contradictions with him, but at the same time, he put forth the um, UPB, and I think that's a pretty solid book. Um, that nobody's perfect. Nobody, no one has a perfect message. You know, like that's it. It's so people, you know, get fixated on these on on these leaders, you know, quote unquote. Right. And then you know, when when the leader doesn't have a perfect message, everybody and it's called dear leader syndrome. It's like they hold them up on a pedestal, and then when it, it, they don't meet all these unrealistic expectations that these people have, they they're like, oh boo boo boo, but like. It was pretty crazy, like, a month ago when everyone was going crazy on Molyneux. It's like, he's not, you know, he's not running for president. Leave him alone. The dude's, you know, helped enough people. 
I don't, right. I don't, yeah. I don't care what the masses think, and I don't even care what you guys think. I'm going to associate freely, and I'm going to enjoy my entertainment freely. If I like Molyneux, even if I disagree with him from time to time, fucking cheers. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> Once one of these activists start taking more than they're contributing, then when there's that's then that's like a problem. You know, if someone's just a horrible, has a terrible message, and they're ruining people's lives, that's one thing. But the dude just, you know, he just had, he's just been helping, trying to help people. I mean, he's trying to make money too, but we all have to make money, you know. Exactly. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call him an activist per se. I'd call him like a, a philosopher, definitely. Sure. But yeah, that helps the cause too. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I I like Molyneux, I like Adam Kokesh, but you know, I don't relate to the um I don't relate to the act of activism myself. I, I am more of a thinker. I, I sit my ass down. I don't <laughs> do much of anything. I it's true. <laughs> I'm not gonna pretend that I don't. So, um, but what I do is I, I like to try to spread the message my own way as well. Um, and that's honestly, why that's why we do well together. I think you know. Yes. We're we're I mean not opposites, but we have different goals and well different um, ways Ability. to implement implement what right. what we're going for. Different abilities, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's so good. You're the thinker. I'm the fucking the muscle. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. No, dude, if you're an anarchist, you think. It's that simple. <laughs> we all got to be activists in our own lives. Yeah. Spreading, you know, a, like happiness and joy to the people around us, you know, more than trying to change everybody's minds in the internet world by doing, you know, said action or not, like... If you're an activist. If you're if you're trying to make people around you happy and you're a good person, that's activism. You know that that's activism more than going to a protest and screaming at people with with a bullhorn. You know, like <laughs> I agree. Really, yeah. hey, you know, if all of us who are doing this stuff are activists on the internet and we aren't actually living it in our lives, we're not doing anything and we're getting nothing done. You know, we're do we're circle jerking. We're playing infield baseball. We're just talking to each other about things we already know about. Like we have to bring new people in, and bringing new people in, you know, you can't bring you can't bring people to these ideas if you're a dick, you know. Right. And <laughs> I've been on this for a few months now, and and you yeah. know, it's 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 real easy to to, to preach. Free markets or gray markets or black markets or voluntary interaction or whatever on the internet. That's real easy to do. But when it comes yeah. down to applying it to your real life, that's another story. And you know, I I do. I, I a hundred percent I do. And I notice that I catch a lot of flack on the interwebs in a in a particular group for some of my actions sometimes. And like. I'm I'm pretty sure that half these people don't even apply these principles to their life outside of Keyboard warriorism, <laughs> Lull, lulzbertarianism, right? But, you know, people who don't, people who are still really caught up in statism, but think they're anarchists, think that the non-aggression principle has nothing to do with uh, mental abuse right. and verbal abuse. And it very much does. You know, you can say something to someone or say something about someone that hurts them more than punching them in the face. You know. Well, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with you on that one. I mean, do you believe in freedom of expression or or not? Yes, but that's, that's I'm I'm spe I'm talking about like true like if I was if I was like. If I was like, you're, you're selling hot dogs in the corner, and I just walked by and was like, this guy's selling poison hot dogs, <laughs> and if you can't feed your kid that just because I'm an asshole, that's that's what I'm talking about more more than like I eat one of your hot dogs and throw up and then say it. It's different, you know. Well, like, see, I'd, I'd call that I'd call that slander. Right, yeah, it's exactly. slander, and it, it's lying. It, it's it's fraud. Yeah, yeah, like it's. 
oh, I just don't like this person, so I'm going to talk shit, and they have to be okay with it because it's my, you know, right to express that, but you know you're just an asshole, you know, you're not a, you're not, you're not putting out positive, you know, we're supposed to be putting out positive here, you know. (laughs) Right. That I I can agree with. There's a friend of mine that uh, I was uh, white knighting in a (laughs) way, Um, (laughs) but um, she was, uh, you know, talking about this very thing, and, um, you know, basically it's the idea that you're trying to put across a message in a positive light and engaging other people to start thinking for themselves instead of um, telling them what to think and, you know, being antithetical to liberty. You know, basically it's absolutely asinine in my opinion. You know, it, you can suggest liberty, but you can't force them to liberty. That's wrong. It's not right. It defeats Try- the entire purpose. Uh, Jeffrey, is there anything uh, you want to plug? Uh, I don't know. Uh, if you want to check out my YouTube, I got lots of videos. There's, you know, stuff from the last year I've really seen. Uh, <laughs> things every once in a while, but it's uh, youtube.com slash Jeffrey Son of Liberty, also on Instagram, Jeffrey Son of Liberty. Um, trying to think. What else? Uh, you, you, always, you always put out a good, some good stuff on Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah, my Facebook is raging. I have I spend, have spent too much time on Facebook, but I have a pretty good feed. <laughs> if you, if you want to check out my Facebook, I, got, I post lots of good shit. But also on um, YouTube, if you want to watch a, a video, it's a couple hours long. It'll change your life. Watch um, uh, it's Marshall Rosenberg, Nonviolent Communication, uh, like disc one or part one. Uh, it's a four-part thing. Um, it's it's kind of some hippie shit, but it has so much to do with freedom and liberty and how we interact with each other that it like there's so much. There's so much good shit for our people in in this um, technique of, of communicating, um, but it's 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 I think it's it's like a two hour video, um, the basics to nonviolent communication. Amazing if you guys watch it, uh, you'll there's there's a, the the dude who uh, the dude who does the video is kind of this old crotchety dude, and he pulls out a guitar and starts singing at one point. Just disregard that and listen to everything else. <laughs> It's super, super amazing stuff. Um, I've, I've like, I was in D.C. for a little bit during the Million Muslim March and the Million Biker March thing, and I, I used nonviolent communication with protesters that were screaming at each other, and like, I don't know, like, I just, it, this stuff really works well. Like, it, it's, you know, you basically. Um, it's it's empathy, you know, and it's like trying to get people to empathize with each other because we're all not that different from each other, and we all kind of want the same thing. So knowing that, you know, we should be able to get along and communicate clearly, and you know, screaming at each other with bullhorns isn't going to do that. We're all just bags full of red water, man. Exactly. Torture report. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. I mean, it's modern. just not. And it's just not news to me, you know. That's like Wikipedia releasing that stuff. Like it's just enough stuff to to piss the people off a little bit, but not enough to to make the people actually overthrow the government. Yeah, it's, it's enough. All, it's enough to maintain accountability, but not enough to to stir riots. We've always <laughs> known the government's been torturing people. Give me a freaking break! Like this isn't new news, but they they put it out there because they want us to be a little bit angry, and you know. You're not going to run out of your house and overthrow the government just because they they tortured some brown people. So they, you know, to to keep us distracted away from Israel and and things that are happening, you know, the escalation in in Iraq again, and you know, they give us these little tidbits. The media gives us these things to to get pissed off about, you know, and to distract us from things that we should really be getting pissed off about. But you know, all Police, these all murders that. and yeah, and like. like even all this, uh, you know, all the, the police brutality stuff, which is great, you know, that really needs to be, light needs to be shed upon this. But again, it's still just distractions. Like, they have to they have to come up with new things to distract us with every month. So, 
you know, they're just on cops and, and torture now. But um, I, uh, I, caught, I caught Ebola last week, and they won't even get me on the news now. Got it. I got it. <laughs> Uh, they were uh, the real situation to me is about Russia and China. Uh, what you we were talking about earlier. That's that's the real situation. I think. Yeah, um, of, in chess right now, it's crazy. Like Obama can barely even play checkers with him, and he's playing chess. And you know, that's just it, it, we've been. You know, we're in the shithole. We just we just think we've been so brainwashed that we still. Everything is good, and it absolutely isn't. And, it, and this is just, you know, once Russia and China join forces and, are, and we're no longer the superpower and our dollar is no longer the lead monetary unit in the world, we're going to be like, oh, crap, like we actually aren't doing as good as we are or we thought we are. Yeah. And, you know, that's going to be one of those things. And it's I say this, I end up saying this basically every single episode, but... In my opinion, it is either going to be World War III or the collapse of the U.S. dollar. And as we know, the state usually wins, so I'm pretty sure that it's going to be World War III. Oh, China, no. China I, I, Russia, Syria, Iraq, whatever country is correct in wanting to remove the, the petrodollar and wanting to trade on a global scale in, in, in oil outside of the USD. They are correct in wanting to do that. But the fact of the matter is, it is in the U.S. best interests to bomb the fuck out of them unless they use the, use the USD, because then it, will, it has no value anymore. The only way that it is currently valued is on the, 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 oil, the world oil market. It's because it is the only currency that is allowed to, to be traded in oil. Yeah. Well, the Zionists want a central bank in every country, and what countries don't have central banks? The Iran. ones that I just named. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All these countries that we have a problem with, so you start to see the O's. So the Zionists, you know, this is where it all starts tying in, is, you know, the Zionists want their bank in every country so they can basically take all the property away because... You know, when you put a bank someplace and loan out money to interest, that interest, the only way of taking that interest back is to take back property eventually. So they're trying to take, you know, they're trying to own the entire world, literally, by, you know, the, the central banking system. And that, that's, you know, that's why we're fighting all these countries. It's, it's wild. Well, Jeffrey, make sure you, um, you link us on some of this stuff, you know, and, and we'll be sure to, to throw it on the page and throw it on the the official show when it comes out on Wednesday, and I'll be sure to uh, to throw you that as well. Awesome, man. Thanks for having yeah. me on. Absolutely. Yeah, so, Michael, uh, who do we have next week again? Yes, next week we have Tony Bones of Cop Block. She is, I believe, one of the founders, if not the founder, of Kansas City, Missouri Cop Block. She's one of the founders of Women of Cop Block. Lots of Cop Block going on here. Uh, she has a show that I think is on VVN, but she's sick, so she couldn't fully confirm, but I think it is, um, called The Bones of Anarchy. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these guys might recognize her from a picture with, <laughs> I don't know if it's Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson, I, I don't know, <laughs> but it's one of these two race faders, and they're in Ferguson, and she's like yelling at them with a bullhorn, uh, which is great. Uh, she's a big activist, she covered Ferguson a lot, and Right on. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that show will be uh, Monday, uh, December 22nd, uh, live, and then, uh, so that's just before Christmas. Um, this show will be airing December 17th, uh, so that's Wednesday at 3 o'clock, and, uh, yeah, once again, Jeffrey, thank you very much for coming on, and uh, we'll put up links for your uh, YouTube for sure and all kinds of stuff. So uh, thanks again, and thank you all for watching. Take care. Bye.